What's up everybody, how are you all doing today? Welcome back to another episode of Phenomenal Views. I am Nick Smith, of course, and it has been a year since the very first episode of Gotham. It's been a year since the first season, and we finally have season two. And I am ready to review each and every episode, just like last year. Uh, I'm going to go in depth into this episode, so for those who do not want to know what happens, I will tell you to leave the video now, because I will be going into major spoiler territory, and my thoughts and possibly theories that could be going on in the show in itself. So, for those who do not want to be here, you got five seconds to leave. Welcome back. For those who decided to leave, uh, I hope that you enjoyed the first episode. I hope you enjoyed the first season of Gotham in general. For those who decided to stay, let's get going. So, this new season... This episode of Gotham, the beginning of it basically recaps what happened at the end of the season. With uh, Penguin killing Fish, claiming he's the king of Gotham. Uh, Gordon getting the best of Loeb, or, or Loeb promote, uh, demoting Gordon to a street cop. Or a traffic director. Uh, the Riddler going crazy. And um, with Barbara going insane. So then it picks up to one month later showing everything that has happened. Showing with um, Gordon getting ready for his first day uh, directing traffic. Shows Bullock that he's a bartender now. Shows Penguin in his new empire. Uh, shows Bruce... Um, trying to figure out... A, the episode pretty much starts like with Bruce trying to figure out this combination. This episode starts off with like Gordon doing his new job, Bruce trying to figure out the combination to unlock the door that's in the cave, and showing Penguin and basically how he runs things. And it also shows us what's going on in Arkham. So while Jim is directing traffic, we see glimpses of this fat guy in an armored suit, and I was thinking, is this the Batman villain known as Prometheus? And the reason why I thought that was because I know that you learn about a lot of the Batman villains in Arkham Asylum, or just Arkham in general. And I've seen things for a villain called Prometheus, and I was like, well, is this guy Prometheus? But no, he is a guy called Zardon, who was instructed by somebody to drink... Actually, no, no, no. He was instructed by someone in this episode to drink the stuff that I guess in his mind he thought was going to make him super powerful and immortal. Um... But that's not the case, because Jim takes him down in quite a few seconds after causing some disturbance. Jim is able to take him down, but he shoves another police officer, and the police officer basically goes and tattletales on him. So Loeb pretty much fires him. And his... Oh, I forget what her name is, but the woman who was basically trying to keep Jim... Basically telling Jim to be careful all the time... He Loeb still has everyone in the Gotham Police Force under his thumb. And he's fired. He didn't quit. But because of this, he's wanting to get justice in Gotham. And he knows that it will never get done as long as Loeb is in command. So he devises the plan of he is going to go to Penguin, ask him for a favor so he can, one, get his job back, and two, get Loeb out. Because he knows that a lot of the crime in Gotham is due to Loeb. And with this, Bruce is basically still trying to figure out what is in um, his dad's cave. He's trying to unlock it. He's trying to figure out any of the secrets. And we get some really funny moments between Alfred and Bruce. These two actors play so well off each other, and it was really good to see the funny banter between the two. Uh, Bruce is going to build a bomb so he can blow the door open. They hint at that Alfred knows something, but he keeps it pretty well hidden. But there are times like when you wonder, yeah, Alfred's got to know something. Um, but he makes a joke. He's like, Bruce, you can blow your head off. And he's like, I'm going to make this bomb. You can either help me. If not, could you get me some tea? And Alfred's like, okay, well, if we're going to build the bomb, you're going to need more than that. And I'll get the count. And I was like, okay, that's, that's pretty funny. <laughs> But now here's something Here's something with Riddler. This was really interesting. Riddler, it shows Riddler in the bathroom, and his reflection is talking to himself. And I was like, whoa, what the heck is going on? And like, it shows like regular Ed is trying to be normal, and he's talking to himself pretty much like, I'm not going to let you hurt Miss Kringle. And the, the reflection's like, oh, don't you wish that you could just hold her in our arms? And he's like, stop it. Stop it. And like when he's leaving, the reflection laughs. I was like... Are they giving him a split personality? 
Because I actually don't think the Riddler has a split personality. I know that's Two-Face. But they pretty much talk about how in this episode, how in order to do the right thing, sometimes you have to do a bad thing or you can make a choice. So Penguin says he'll do what Gordon asks him to do, but it's going to cost him a price. And we see that when he uh, takes this job, he can take down a lot more people. I, mean, I was just surprised. I mean, I know Jim is an awesome fighter and an awesome shot, but when he goes to this place, because Penguin, it's a guy that owe, owes Penguin money, but he's not going to give it to him because he is not Falcone. And he refuses to give Falcone, uh, Penguin the money, so Gordon shows up, and he's able to take all three of these guys down single-handedly with a gun pointed at one guy's face. And I was like, Jim Gordon, you impress me more and more each time. And even takes down the guy. But I tell you, here's one of the things in this episode, and even in the series, that I do not know how I feel about. Possibly the fact that Barbara Gordon might be the new Harley Quinn in this series. Because of what happened last time when she killed her parents. She basically, because of her beauty and because of how they're having her portray Barbara, the actress... They're basically having her, like, using her beauty to get what she wants and being all crazy and everything. And her having moments with Joker, but she's not really interested in him. Uh, but he basically is like, look, you need friends in a place like this. And he gets friends, or she gets friends by her beauty. And so she gets a phone and she talks to Jim and she's like, Jim, I, I didn't kill my parents. I didn't. You got to get me out of here. And Jim's like, you're insane. Don't call back. So then she calls their house, and, and Jim's like, just let it go to voicemail, and it says, Hey, girl, sorry I missed you. I hope you die a most painful death, you. Bye. And I was like, okay, yeah, they're obviously making her Harley Quinn. It's, it's obvious. I really, don't, I really don't want them to, though. But who knows, they, they might do something different. On a side note, Selena Kyle is working with Penguin now. And uh, Jim comes in and is like, how you doing, Selena? You like a new new job? It's a promotion, and he's like, "Yeah, you gotta get up in the world, I guess, or, or something along the lines like that." But it was pretty funny. Um, other things in this episode that happened, which was really weird, Zardon kept burping this blue stuff, and the the stuff that he drank, he keeps burping a mist, and I was like, "Well, I wonder what's gonna happen with this," and I was like, "I was thinking he drunk dragon blood or something like the head of the demon," but no. We find out later because they send him to Arkham. And this was a... This kind of made me think of the Dark Knight. This guy is going like, You all will bow to Zardon! And then like sound like his master will rule or something. Then he gets on the table and he starts choking and then he dies. And it made me think of that scene in the Dark Knight where the guy had the cell phone in his body. I was like, this is kind of disturbing. And so we find out that he was actually a bomb. And so they find out that six people escaped. Barbara was one of them, and that's what they said. Like Barbara was one of them. Barbara, the Joker, her bodyguard, and three other guys. And it was by the new guy, the guy who's possibly the new commissioner, Theo uh, Galithian. And the thing that Penguin ends up doing to Loeb is he knows that there's no way that he's going to be able to get him to drop out or quit. So, or he, he knows that, like, he can't bribe him, he can't threaten him. So he devises that he retires. Loeb's not happy about it. Loeb is pissed. Like, you can just see this look on his face. He's like... He's trying to keep his composure because he's pissed that he has to retire because it's what Jim wanted. And when they get this new guy, when they get um, Theo Gathillion, he um, he lets one of the guys go. And the guy's like, Barbara's coming with me. I'm her bodyguard. And he's like, oh, she's not coming with you because you don't. she's not going to want to go where you're going. And it's the assassins. Uh, actually, it's Theo's sister was one of the assassins who tried to kill Selina. And she's choking the guy to death and then stabbing him, and the Joker is just laughing it up. And he's basically... They're basically in the situation, if you want to leave, you're going to die. You work for me or you die. 
and and Barbara has this look on her face like, crap, what have I gotten myself into now? And so, you know, Jim has his job back. Bruce, Bruce and Jim actually have a very good moment with each other because this is after he got fired. He goes and tells Bruce that he cannot keep his promise because he was fired. But Bruce tells him, like, you're going to continue the investigation of my parents' murder. You are going to get your job back. And they talk about, like, how if he had to do it, he would have to do something bad. And he, he does. And when they finally get in the cave, they find out that the combination was Bruce. It was his name, and he kept typing in so many combinations. But my favorite scene in this whole episode is when, after Gordon leaves, Bruce clicks the button to go down to the cave. I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome! Because it made me think of, like, a young Batman just waiting until someone leaves to open the cave and go down there. I was like, oh, this is so cool! And he couldn't figure out the thing, and so that's why he built the bomb. So they find this letter... And he's basically like, son, I knew you would find this place someday. If you are reading this letter, I am dead. This place exists because of you, because his dad was trying to change to become a better person and try to figure out what's going wrong in Wayne Industries. And he's like, I do, know what, I do not know what happened to me, what happened to your mother. And he basically talks about how he's sorry he's not going to be able to see the man that he is going to become. But he says that he came with a choice. You cannot have happiness and truth at the same time. You can only have one or the other. And Thomas said, I honestly hope you choose happiness. But if there comes a time when you have to choose truth, it needs to come from a desire of a true calling. And Bruce is like, a calling. A true calling. The episode ends. Basically showing us that Bruce is developing his calling to eventually become the Batman. And I honestly cannot wait to see what else is going to happen in this season. I'm so excited. Episode 1 was okay. It was kind of slow, but it picked up. It does have some people having good chemistry with each other still. There's good chemistry between Gordon and Harvey Bullock. And, like, they learn what Harvey's experience as a cop. The job, he drunk a lot. Uh, he was single and he wasn't happy. But once he, he talked about like, what the job did to him. But now he runs a bar, he's happy, he's not single, he quit drinking, and he's happy with his life. And I honestly hope that they do not leave Bullock out of the series. Like, I hope this is not the last time we see Bullock. Because I love the chemistry between Gordon and Harvey Bullock. They have such good chemistry. They still consider each other brothers. And it is just something I'm really hoping that I get to see. Well, guys, that is. I'm going to give this episode... A 7 out of 10. Not too bad. It's it's a little slow, and I'm not really happy. I'm not really satisfied with Barbara kind of being Harley Quinn. But I'll get over it. This has been another episode of Phenomenal Views. Put in the comments below what you thought of the very first episode of Gotham of Season 2. I really want to know. For those who are watching this video, thank you for taking your time to watch this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. And I hope that you are going to enjoy my reviews of the next season of Gotham. Because I'm certainly ready for it. I hope you guys are. Have a good day, guys.